like my argument is hinging on whether or not I've ever planted a carrot. Have you ever planted a carrot? If you haven't, you don't know anything about factory farming. Actually, Darren, you have just made me realize something that I've never considered. Poor people will die of starvation. There'll be nothing to eat if we can't eat, um, you know, Gareth's Welsh lamb. That is eight pounds a kilo from the heavens of the Welsh, you know, highlands. Like, are you serious, dude? There's nothing that um, makes me more frustrated when someone say people should have a choice. Oh, mate, Gareth, check out Gareth's nutritious British breakfast here. Mate, look at that nutrition. Carcinogen. Hello, everyone. So if you hadn't heard, I had a debate recently on GB News. It's quite a frustrating debate with a farmer, quite intense and heated. But there were many things I didn't get to say during the debate. So I thought I'd do a live stream and react and add a little bit more context where I didn't have the chance to. So I'm uploading it now again for you. Cut it up a little bit, made it a little bit more engaging. So I hope you enjoy. This is me reacting to my debate that I had on Saturday with GB News. Let me just say, like, they did not tell me I was going to have a debate. They didn't tell me it was going to be three people. Uh, on. They told me Darren Grimes is going to interview you. So basically, I went into this not even knowing it was going to be a debate. And then as soon as I got on camera, I just seen, like, two other people there. I'm like, okay. All right, well, let's go. Um, and getting the right nutrition, and that's really important. And like, you got to get the right nutrition. The most nutritious food on earth is dead lambs. Like, the most nutritious, sustainable, amazing food is dead lambs. Livestock farmer up here, you know, we're in the middle of lambing and calving. Um, them lambs now will be ready. Them lambs now will be ready to go to the slaughterhouse to have their head cut off. That's what... Pays my bills, keeps the roof above my head. And, um, you know, we're very, very lucky in this country. Yeah, and if you see the roof over his head, it's actually quite a nice roof over his head, actually. It doesn't just pay the bills. He actually, he looks like he's living it up quite a lot. Big, massive house, heaps of land. Seems quite well off, actually. That we're supported by the British public. You know, meat is very, very nutritious, especially grass-fed, uh, you know, lamb or beef. It's so nutritious, like, and he's like, I'm glad the, the public support us. You know, the public support you in more ways, ways than one because our tax dollars go to farming uh, without our permission, actually, to subsidize you. So um, let's just see how nutritious lamb is. Go on, let's go roast leg, mate. Let's go 2,000 calories. It's a full day of just lamb. There's no vitamin C? Holy moly. There's no fiber, but uh, yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty much going to die without vitamin C or get scurvy. Let's have a look at saturated fat here. <laughs> Whoa, 32 grams saturated fat. Look at the cholesterol. Dude. Look at the cholesterol. <laughs> like if you ate lamb, like the way he's talking about it, 900 milligrams of cholesterol. Holy, that's like, that's crazy. I'm going to keep a little bit of... Uh pigs as well so uh, they get some of the you know the stuff that comes from my vegetable plot that we don't want and i use the manure as well from the back got some pigs there getting ready to, to slaughter them so they squeal for their lives in a slaughterhouse the pigs tend to the cows to grow my veg so all that is the circle of life it's the circle of life um gareth you know that phrase that whole song it's like an elton john song that come from the lion king that's what it is it's a it's a fantasy. These animals are feet are being fed like silage and hay and all of this. Like they don't just eat grass off the ground. All of that land as well. Just Joseph Poor's study said eighty three percent of farmland is for ag animal agriculture. But then there was a if you add in some UN data, I think it's like seventy seven. But it's like most most of the farmland, like the vast majority, is just used for either grazing animals or feeding the animals. You know what I mean? Just insane. But circle of life and regenerative, you know, like we use their feces, you know, we use their feces and then we slaughter them, cut their heads off. And that's, uh, we have to do it basically. If we don't do it, humanity will just perish. Gareth, how hard would you be hit if, if Joey, we're going to come to Joey in a second, but if Joey and, and his clan got their way and actually your industry was redundant? I mean, it's Darren Grimes. Like I, I, I come into the discussion thinking, I'll give him a chance. He seems like pretty reasonable. 
But you can tell he was uh, just a biased, um, rude. He starts calling me Joey and his clan. Like, Joey and his clan, like, we're a massive movement um, all around the world. The connotation of what he's saying, though, is like he's just like the bad guy and his clan is going to take down Gareth, the poor, honest farmer, just struggling to get by with massive acreage. Poor Gareth. Like, he's he actually said he's getting more for lamb now, so it's more lucrative to him. But anyways, that's this Darren guy. He already he already has his bias set, set from the start. He's not interested in learning or finding out the truth of the discussion. Um they're only interested in having me on as someone to chastise publicly and to use as the villain. I, I don't really care, to be honest. It doesn't bother me. Go for it, mate. But I'm going to have my say, that's for sure. They're about 3 to 5% of the population. So I'm not worried about little Joey, to be honest with you. We're about 3 to 5% of the population making massive waves. Look at Big January. Look at Big January. Like you're not scared of a January? They they had to, if you're not if the farming community isn't scared, why did the AHDB spend three and a half million pounds on their eat balanced campaign? Three and a half million pounds. Million pounds. That is crazy. And you're telling me that the AHDB aren't worried about Veganuary? They spent that money during Veganuary. You got you have to like keep promoting it and pushing it because you're afraid. That consumer demand is changing. Um, what we carry on is, you know, we get the support. The majority of the British public are behind us. And, you know, I was getting maybe £4 a kilo last um, two years ago. We're up to 6 and £7 a kilo for lamb. You know, the demand's out there. You know, like, this is about should we ban offers on cheap meat, but uh, I'm just letting you know how much I get for my meat. I'm getting way more way more you have to pay way more for my lamb you know what i mean you know and it's just like the public are behind us the british public are behind us i don't think most of the british public give a shit really <laughs> they just want to eat meat like you don't really see that many like oh go our farmers like like when you when i go out to the to wider public right I'm, I'm out there talking to the public all the time most people just mindlessly eat meat they don't really give a damn where it comes from. Usually, like they're eating, they're in there eating KFC. Do you think they care about um, where the chickens come from in KFC? Why do you think KFC gets so much business? You think they're just thinking, oh, our beautiful British hardworking farmers have like produced this amazing food for us in KFC? They don't give a damn. They don't even care if it's factory farmed. Sometimes they eat it. They're not like, oh, go like go farmers. You know, I think this guy, he's, a, he's actually an advocate. Like, I'm an advocate for the animals. He's an advocate for farming. And it comes across because he completely makes stuff up, actually. Denies reality. Everybody's shouting for it because they know it's sustainable. It's really healthy for you. You know, it's full of top quality protein, nutrition. <laughs> protein. It's full of top quality protein. Like, you know, red meat, right? The World Health Organization classified it as a two class 2A carcinogen, prop meaning it probably causes cancer. It's a top quality protein. <laughs> Mate, eating flesh is not top quality protein, all right? You know, it's uh, top quality protein is when you can get protein and you can get fiber as well, and it doesn't probably cause cancer. All the vitamins you want. So, you know, I... All the vitamins you want except for... Well, fiber's not a vitamin, but it's pretty damn important. Uh, vitamin C? What, what about that one? What about that? Because just, like He's acting like you can just eat lamb, no worries. You know what I mean? I'm not worried. One, I ought to, um, about Joey and his uh, little gang, to be honest with you. And he called me Little Joey, didn't he? Like, Little Joey. Try what, what was that? Is he one of those insecure, like, what do you mean, little? What, is that, what has that got to do with anything? Little Joey. Mate, back in my day, you would have been, I would have been a handful for you, mate. I'm telling you, back when I was uh, on the streets, little Joey wouldn't, just saying little Joey to me wouldn't have stopped me. Um, but, you know, these days I'm calm, calm, having a discussion. What does my size have to do with it? You know what I mean? It's almost like you're a bit threatened there. So you have to go and, and, and to, just, just to like almost prove it to yourself that you're not a little bit intimidated. Little Joey and his little clan yeah if you weren't so worried why do you have to advocate for your product like you're a priest 
the most nutritious product on earth. Oh my God, without it, we would die like without lamb. Like you can't live without cutting off little lamb's heads. You know, like why do you have to advocate for it so fiercely if you're so confident? Shouldn't it just sell itself? If the British public are so behind you, why do you have to spend like every single day on your Facebook advocating, advocating, advocating? I have to because we are, we are going up against huge industries, huge marketing campaigns like the AHDB's three and a half million pound campaign to get people to eat meat during Veganuary because they're so terrified of Veganuary. Um, so, yeah, look, I think he's just trying to prove it, like basically prove it to himself that he's not a bit concerned about the vegan movement. Joey, I'm going to let you come in now. Are you worried about the impact that encouraging the British people to, to get off meat would actually have on farmers and actually some of the poorest people in society that would have to potentially go for more expensive vegan friendly products? You see what I mean? Like painting me out to be the villain. Aren't you worried about like forcing poor people to pay for expensive products and destroying the lives of this poor farmer who's like living in a mansion with a million acres of land, just making bulk cash off all his lambs that he slaughters? Uh, listen, like you're talking about banning the promotion of cheap meat and this Gareth guy's got one of these small holding farms where, you know, it doesn't represent the majority of farming in the UK anyway. 85% of UK animals are factory farmed. Of the billion chickens that are slaughtered here every year in this country, 95% of them are factory farmed. And over the last 16 weeks, none of them have been let out because of bird flu. So you're talking about factory farmed animals predominantly. Over 90% of the, uh, the pigs here are factory farmed. And they're killed in gas chambers, one of the cruelest ways to die. And no welfare and a welfare organization uh, organization denies that so gareth represents us he called us three or three to five percent gareth actually represents a small percentage of um what the meat the meat that's actually eaten and if you're worried about expensive then this grass-fed small holding free range unaccessible meat is one of the most expensive uh foods you can basically buy and also um there's a billion chickens being slaughtered here that Gareth th seems to not think exist, which is pretty hilarious. Um, the, and they drive up the percentage of factory farmed, the, the, the animals that are factory farmed by a huge margin. So that's what he doesn't get. He's thinking that chickens don't exist. And when you include factory farmed fish, it's actually higher um, because a lot of people don't understand that. Like in like Scotland and all around the, the waters, there's big, fish factory farms the cheapest foods in the supermarket the rice the beans the oats the uh did you see him laughing <laughs> what are you laughing at statistics what are you laughing at data <laughs> you're sitting there advocating like the most nutritious food on earth is dead lambs food with cholesterol saturated fat oh don't worry about the science on that don't worry that does that's just false and then um i come out and i'm like well so this is the statistics here there's a billion chickens being killed and actually 95% of them are factory farm by default anyway. But at the moment, none of the, none of their hens have been let out. Even free range egg layers aren't even being let out one second in the last 16 weeks because of bird flu. None of the egg layers and, and about over 50% of the, the eggs in the UK are free range and they've lost their free range certification because they haven't even been able to let them out because of bird flu. So right now there isn't even free range eggs. And he's like Pah, laughing at me like, <laughs> and I don't know anything about farming. And I don't know anything about farming. Wow. Uh, lentils are some of the cheapest, you know, some of the cheapest. And you're laughing there. Do you think gas chambers are funny, Garth? He was laughing when I was saying something serious. And then um, I wanted to put it back on him, put the pressure back on him. But if you get a kilo of lentils, um, he was talking about, what was he talking about? Six, seven, eight pounds a kilo for, uh, for lamb? There's no way you're paying eight pounds a kilo for lentils and they're filled with fiber and nutrients and iron. They're, they're really healthy for you. So basically, Garth was talking about what he gets wholesale for lamb. But if you actually look up lamb chops here, so this is 550, but per kilo for lamb chops, you're looking at 13 pounds. That's crazy. Look at this lamb cutlets, garlic and rosemary crumb, 20 quid a kilo. Lamb leg, diced. 15 pounds a kilo. What's that? Lentils. One pound 80 a kilo. It's nearly tenfold less for lentils.
incredibly nutritious, full of fiber, great food. Yeah, Gareth, I'll just let yeah, you come out little, in on that. Little, little Joey, yeah, uh, you just make me laugh, honestly. You've got no idea. Uh, let me just do an impersonation quickly of uh, Gareth. Little Joey, yeah. <laughs> you don't intimidate or scare me. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I, I don't have enough intellect to actually digest what you just said, so I'm just going to laugh and, and insult you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. That doesn't come very often, so, so lap it up. You've got no idea. Um, look, I, I run uh, a what did I say that's false? Years, okay? Uh, that's what I would like to know, actually, Gareth. Like, what part of what I said was false? Let's hear what he says. 4,000 ewes, okay? We've got 300 head of cattle. He's got 4,000 ewes and 300 head of cattle. So not, not really a small holding. Oh, wow, well, my mistake. Uh, definitely doesn't represent majority of farming, though, still. Um, it's a partnership. It's a business. It's not a factory farm. The majority... <laughs> it's a farm, mate. It's a business. It's not a factory farm. Never said yours was. What I said was the majority of the animals in land animals in the UK are factory farmed and animals generally are factory farmed. The majority. That's what I said. I never said you have a factory farm. Gareth, you know, there's other farms out there other than yours. The majority of the animals in this country are outside me. The majority of the animals. Are, this is where I knew that Gareth does not have a clue about farming in this country. This is hilarious. Never, ever let a farmer tell you they know more about farming than you just because they're a farmer, just from virtue of them being a farmer. That's an appeal to authority. It doesn't matter if you've never seen a farm, all right? You just, and you've read all, if you've read all the data, statistics from the government, the, the farming bodies, this is their data, AHDB data, DEFRA data, all of this data, right? If you've read that, and, and a farmer hasn't, and they live in their own farming world, then you know more statistically about farming um, numbers than they do. He doesn't even think factory farms exist in the UK. How hilariously stupid. Um, and, they're, and they're insulting me and my intelligence and trying to belittle me. What a fool. What a fool. Don't usually rip into people like this, but this Gareth dude, different story, and I don't care what you say. He's just a different type of person he's denying factory farms exist in the uk how sickening and how how dishonest how can you believe anything that comes out of this person's mouth at this point denying factory farms exist he's basically saying the majority of animals in the uk are out on the land okay where do the chickens live, mate? They haven't been outside for 16 weeks because of bird flu, and 95% of them are factory farmed. These aren't even my stats. Look them up yourself. Over 800 mega-style US farms in the UK. Over 800. I think it's around 800, but that was like 2017 when the they are the Bureau of Investigative Journalism. There are around 800 mega-US-style factory farms in the UK. And uh, this guy's denying that they exist. And that's what's driving up the percentage of factory farming, actually, in this country. So, like, anyway, beside the point, right, you know me, I don't, I don't want animals out. I'm not one of these psychotic people who think that because you treat an animal nicely, you can then throw them in a slaughterhouse to have their head cut off of their body. That's not me. So factory farmed or not, I don't agree with it principally. So you're telling me that all of these are out on grass. You're part of the problem, see? You're the one who's um, propagating these humane lies to the public. They go in the supermarket. They think it's all green grass and pastures. I investigate these farms. I do it all the time. I'm in there seeing the chickens dying on their faces. They go into gas chambers. You think it's funny? Pigs die in gas chambers, 86% of them. That's a deferous stat. And they suffer in these gas chambers to death. And you're laughing because you think it's funny. How would he was laughing at me, goading me. Um, but I do good under that type of pressure, actually. I, I actually, I actually don't mind a bit of a, a dirty fight in the in a debate on TV, actually. Uh, so yeah, if you want that, mate, uh, I'm down for that any time of the week. The reason I said that I investigate farms is because that that brings a level of credibility than just some person who's just completely disconnected from farms altogether. Like I walk through them, I know where they are, I've been inside of them dozens of them at this point, probably more than this person. 
actually. Been in probably more more pig and chicken farms than Gareth has. Otherwise, he wouldn't be saying this nonsense. How would you like to trade places with these animals, you, Gareth? I'm laughing. How would you like to trade places with these animals, Gareth? You wouldn't be laughing so much then if you were in a gas chamber screaming for your life, would you then? You wouldn't be laughing so much if you had to go to the slaughterhouse where you where you send your lambs and your cows, would you? Trying to escape the knot box, seeing blood everywhere, you know, your life flashing before your eyes. Most horrible terror to lose your life in a slaughterhouse. You know, Gareth doesn't think, think of that. He only thinks of himself, actually, and his in pocket and how much money he's going to make from slaughtering animals. You, you have got. Yeah, the way I'm laughing at you. you I'm you, laughing. I am at He said he's laughing at me. I'm laughing at you. He's like he's laughing at me, trying to. Um, which is these are just ad hominem attacks, really. He's going little Joey. You know, we're not like ba basically debate the point. Don't don't distract people. Going, I'm laughing at you. You're a little Joey. I'm not afraid of you. Uh, la, la 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 la. Like it's all white noise. D debate the point. And uh, I just said I'm laughing at you back because uh, I didn't want to sit there and um, let him just talk down to me like i was some type of like infant that couldn't back themselves up absolutely a lot of farmers vegan, listen you're sitting in your vegan world you've got no idea how your food's produced i bet you don't grow anything i'm an investor <laughs> that's his ex that, that was his uh response after everything i just said about the way animals are killed the way they're raised you know uh this defra stat on how many pigs are gassed the horrible suffering they endure he said you have no idea how your food is produced. Have you ever planted a, a garden? <laughs> like my argument is hinging on whether or not I've ever planted a carrot. Is that not hilarious? That he thinks whether or not you've got a garden determines the validity of your argument, determines how strong your argument is, determines how factual what you're saying is, if you've never planted a garden, you don't know anything about factory farms in the UK. Hilarious. And he's saying, I don't know anything about his, about food. You don't even know that, that animals are factory farms in the UK. <laughs> you don't even know that most animals are indoors in the UK. It's actually quite sad that you're a farming advocate and you don't even know about pigs in farrowing crates, for example. The 60% of the sows, the mothers, are in farrowing crates and that they're red tractor approved. And I don't know anything because I haven't planted a garden. You know, wait, wait a second. I've got a pot plant in the kitchen. Should I just water that? And then all of a sudden, like I've got an, I'm an authority on, on gardening and factory farming. If I just water my pot plant, should I go get it? Here we go, Gareth. Here we go. I've got a plant here. This one here, it doesn't even need watering. It doesn't even, wow, look at it. Look at it. It kind of, kind of reminds me of someone actually. Have you ever planted a carrot? If you haven't, you don't know anything about factory farming. I grow my own vegetables. I grow my own fruit. <laughs> Do you want a medal, mate, or what? Did we have a discussion about like factory farming in the UK? Farms all the time. We research. And anyway, what I did is um, I recorded the audio on my end. So if you if you, this is on this is actually on their page. But when you watch it on my channel, if you want to watch the whole thing. Please do, and please leave a comment. Um, then you'll notice that my audio is better because I recorded the audio on my end because I know their little tricks to switchy, switching mics. Uh, no one's going to hear anything. No one's going to hear anything. Yeah, no one's going to hear anything. So just shut up and let Gareth talk his nonsense, please, because I, I like passing the mic to Gareth because he represents the view that I want to be commonly held, and he represents my bias. I'd like to just have a one-on-one -on -one debate with this uh, Darren Grimes uh, guy. Uh, that would be. Very satisfying. I'd like to know he's such a hypocrite, and you'll find out soon why he's such a hypocrite. Use my vegetables on my plate than it does for my meat. One cow will feed many, many families for a long time. He said it takes more animals to die for the vegetables on his plate than it does for his meat. Hilarious. Hilarious. He actually believes this. Nonsense. It's a uh, number of animals killed to produce 1 million calories in eight food categories. I can just show you this, actually. Wow, the red. If you see the red line, the red line represents um, the slaughter, and the this line represents harvest. But here's vegetables down here. Now, milk is interesting because they didn't account for the slaughter of milk, beef slaughter. Look at that from the harvest. Look at all the deaths from the harvest. If you're going to make a claim that <laughs> the meat on your table causes less deaths than vegetables, that's an empirical sort of claim, and you you know 
you'd want to have some data to back that up. Um, I agree that that data there isn't the best. It's the best that exists though. And it's better than what, what data he's, he's just making just some random claim without evidence. The amount of harvesting that goes on in the UK for cows, silage, pre-grain crops, they harvest hay, big hay bales. You ever go to any farm, right? And I've been to a few. There will be massive round hay bales at these farms because they're not just going to eat the grass off the ground. That's not how it works. Not everywhere can just eat grass off the ground, like enough to feed these cows for two, three years. If you're going to say that harvesting vegan crops causes death, and you're not going to say harvesting silage, pre pre dough crops, and hay for cows causes death. One causes death and one doesn't. And then you you exploit and kill the cow on top of it. So you get your facts right. You're living in cuckoo land, mate. Right, guys. Matthew, I but I need to get my facts right, and I'm living in cuckoo land. I just wanted you guys to see the satisfied look on his face here, Gareth. Look, you you need to get your facts right. You're living in cuckoo land, mate. I don't even think factory farms exist in the UK. That's how I've got my facts straight. All the animals are out on the on the grass. As you can see, when you walk out in the UK, all you see is pigs and chickens everywhere. Pigs and chickens everywhere. Oh, wait, no, it's just some lambs and some and a few cows here and there. Oh, where are the pigs and chickens? Oh, oh, that's right. Factory farms actually exist here in the UK, and they're disgusting. I completely didn't know that because I'm just stuck on my stuck on my lamb farm. And don't and are completely sheltered from the rest of farming in the UK or something. Do you actually think that this country is is quite unique in in buying these forms of, of meat and farming that are actually of detriment to both the environment and indeed animals? Because we are painted as being a nation of animal lovers, aren't we? Um, well, no, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of moderate. I'm kind of in between there. You know, I, 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 I you know, I, I think some people will always eat meat and i don't think you know i i wouldn't stay ban anything but at the same time personally i would not be known in, in history as someone who just bowed down like an apologist and took some it, it took some comfortable middle ground um that's not me and that will never be me at the same time there's an environmental cost animals don't want to die um and as as, as joey says chickens are stuck in battery farms that's cruel i mean that's full stop you know, you can't argue that that's not cruel. Well, I, no, I would totally agree with that, those sentiments as well. That's where I think there, there would be broad agreement. But what a liar and a hypocrite. Like, Darren, I see straight through you. I see straight through you. Oh, that's where we have broad agreement. Uh, you know, like, yeah, it is cruel. Yeah, like, shut up. You're not interested in what is cruel. He says he won't stop eating meat. All right, listen. I actually worry that banning promotional offers on meat does mean that people are going to really struggle because, as you say, Matthew, people are not just going to stop eating meat, are they? I'm certainly not. See? He's not concerned about what's moral and what's cruel or not. That was just... That there was textbook lip service, what he just did then, because he would look like an ass. If he just said, yeah, like, who can argue with that? Battery cages with hens, who can argue with that? And he's like, yeah, no, we will have broad agreement there. Like, you know, that's lip service. That's lip service. You don't care about. I just spent five minutes t talking about factory farming, animals dying on their faces, and you were laughing. You were laughing, smiling. You know what I mean? He's not concerned with this. This is, this is like, so I, you're see-through. You're absolutely see-through. See straight through you. You don't care about animal cruelty you're too busy in your own little political world you know to care about what's going on inside factory farms did not care what whatsoever and then he said people aren't just gonna i'm not gonna stop eating meat i'm not okay so even if it was the cruelest thing on earth right you won't stop eating it so okay th that's consistent well i mean the cheap protein comes from chicken but you know the studies i mentioned earlier on say that you know not eating meat is cheaper than eating meat, no, no matter what level of society you're at. It's, a, it's an education thing. The government needs to educate people how to cook. And during the pandemic, people learned how to cook. They didn't go out, they didn't, you know, eat their steak in the restaurant. Um, you know, during the war, people lived healthier because they didn't get much meat, they didn't get much sugar. They had a government-controlled diet. I'm not saying have a government-controlled diet, but people need, because people should have a choice. But at the same time, because people get to choose they get to eat the big cost on the nhs 
there's nothing that um, makes me more frustrated when someone say people should have a choice. When you talk about fairness and justice, right, if you just give one group of the moral community a choice and that choice inflicts pain and suffering on another group of the moral community, which are non-human animals who are also sentient and deserve moral consideration, that is not fair, okay? Now, if you're going to apply the choice theory, then you should apply it consistently and say, hey, well, let's let's try to analyze what, what the animals would choose here. They can't speak with language, but let's just look at it from a sentient conscious cow's point of view. What would their choice be as a conscious individual who can experience the world? Would they choose to be on Gareth's farm and go to a slaughterhouse to be shot in the head and have their head cut off so that another person can choose to eat their body? Or would their choice conflict with the choice of the meat eater? Whose choice has more value in this situation? Is it the animal who would choose to live? Who would choose not to have their entire existence robbed from them? Or is it a human being who just choosing to have a burger today? You know? And they're gonna it's gonna be a five minute meal and they're gonna flush it down the toilet and forget about it. Whose choice has a little bit more weight? And whose choice should we focus on a little bit more? A lot more, actually. I think it's the animal's choice to live and not to be exploited and killed. Do you know what I mean? So this is the hypocrisy of this, this choice thing. We should have a choice. The oppressor should have first choice um, over who we eat, of course. You know, yeah, it's always the oppressor's choice. You know, um, I've got a few more analogies I could make but I think I'll just leave it there because I might get carried away. Yes, uh, uh, that's the important the point for me choice. because... That's what yeah. the animals deserve a choice not to go into a slaughterhouse to have their head cut off for a sandwich. That is disgusting. And we're talking about 2022. We're still cutting off little lambs' heads for a steak or a, a lamb shop. Like, what is this? This is not civil. Did you see Gareth little... I'm I'm making a point about choice here and about the animals would choose... This is actually one of the, the, the favourite things to me that I said in this entire discussion, because this Gareth guy, people just look at him like, oh, this is a wholesome farmer. If we, if we, if we checked out the slaughterhouse his lambs went to, <laughs> bet you it's just a bloodbath, bloodbath, suffering animals dying in their own blood, just sickening. It's just a, it's just a horrible, horrible place. Um, but he's there smiling when I'm saying this disgusting and we're talking about smiling. 2022. We're still cutting off little lambs heads for a steak or a, a lamb chop. Like, what is this? This is not civil. Uh, well, uh, uh, Paul uh, well, you know, here we go. Darren Grimes is going to jump in with his extreme rationale and next level logic. What is it? So what I thought, Joey, what are we supposed to eat instead? What would you like us to, to actually get our protein from? <laughs> huh. Wow, Darren, thanks for your insight there, mate. Actually, Darren, you have just made me realize something that I've never considered. There would be nothing else to eat if we didn't chop off the heads of little lambs. I'm sorry. We are in a dire survival situation, Darren, and we do need to cut off the heads of millions of lambs a year. Otherwise, poor people will die of starvation. There'll be nothing to eat if we can't eat, um, you know, Gareth's Welsh lamb that is eight pounds a kilo from the heavens of the Welsh, you know, highlands. Like, are you serious, dude? Like, this is what I mean. Like, people like like this Darren dude, they sit there, right? Like, all intellectual and all this stuff. Like, you can't rub two pieces of logic together, right? Just because you're educated in a certain field, right, which might be politics or conservative politics or whatever you get into, that does not mean that you're all that smart, all that sharp, because... Or you're just completely, or you are, or or it's this. Because I find that harder to believe that you're not, you're actually that stupid. I, I honestly think maybe you are smart enough to know there's other things to eat, right? But because you don't want to eat anything else, and because you're clouded by your conservative little traditional values bias, right? And the British farmer's bias that you don't want to even consider any other option. And you just want to put it back on me and go, what's he going to say? Eat lettuce or something? Oh, wait, here we go. He's going to say to eat those vegan burgers. Oh, <laughs> wait for this. You know, so I don't know which one it is. Um, 
it, it's it's a bit difficult for me. Uh, maybe you're just playing dumb. Um, but if you're not, then hell, I don't know how you got that job, mate. Sitting in that chair if you don't know that there's other things to eat for protein other than murdered animals. It's 2022. Like, w w this isn't a discussion that's happening in 1970, you know. Well, very good question, mate. I appreciate that. I've been vegan nearly 10 years and I eat whole grains, beans, legumes, fruits and vegetables, local fruits and vegetables. You know, uh, there's no problem getting all of the nutrients you need. You can supplement B12. You don't have to stab a lamb in the throat to get B12 out of their blood. And you can live perfectly healthy without having a billion chickens in factory farms and right. okay, you've all said that. Yes, 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 yes. I've heard that. So, See, so how rude of him. How rude of him to, to interrupt me there. Good on you, Darren. Good on you, Darren. Come on my channel, we'll see if you can get away with that. But yeah, like just just really rude and disrespectful. You know, I'm finishing my point, and it, it did lead back to the the chickens and factory farms and the slaughterhouses. For what I was saying, I was saying you can get all the nutrients you need without having a billion chickens in in uh, factory farms and in slaughterhouses in the UK. So it, it actually followed my point, what I was trying to say. And uh, you don't even need to eat local fruits and vegetables in order to be a vegan. Like, and it, 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 like people think just because it's not local, it's like evil or something. You know, if I drive thirty minutes that way, there's a there's a factory farm in with, with chickens dying on their faces. It's thirty minutes away. It's local. So would you say, oh yeah, but you better buy, better off buying local chicken, right? For me, I could buy local chicken, right? Than it is to buy uh, lentils from Europe. Like, are you silly? Of course, I don't want local chicken. The chickens, Gareth. Why should we actually ban cheap meat? Yeah, we've heard about chickens, Joey. Let me just get my little love child boy on Gareth here to see what he's got to say. Um, we love it, Gareth, here at GB News. He's the only voice we ever have on, actually. He's the voice for all of England, actually. This Gareth guy, Gareth's Welsh, <laughs> lives in like some Welsh, um, Snowdonia, which is like a resort. He's living in some fantasy land, right? How the hell does this guy represent English people? You know, you know what I mean? Like, I've probably got him more, more in common with your average English person than Gareth does. But this book is an absolute joke. He's got no idea. <laughs> this guy's an absolute joke. He's got no idea. All the animals are out on the grass. <laughs> of course they are. You know, where his food's coming for, how many creatures are dying for him to be fed. You know, I know because I'm a farmer, I'm in that field. You know, I see what dies for me to produce my salads. For my <laughs> this is the most hilarious part. He's a farmer, he's out in his field. He sees what all the animals that have to die for his salad, right? Let's go to his Facebook page. I want to show you. Oh, mate, Gareth, check out Gareth's nutritious british breakfast here mate look at that nutrition carcinogen bacon is a is a type one class one carcinogen uh classified by the world health organization look at that cholesterol bomb well time to refuel you're not going to be with us much longer gareth if you keep refueling like, like that and then he's, he's calling me little joey again he's got a head that looks similar to my toe um, so let's just, I just want to show you his vegetable plot that he was saying, cause what, let, let's just, let's just <laughs> think about this, right? So he literally said, I'm a farmer, right? I know exactly how many animals have to die for my lettuce and that. <clears throat> Look at him sucking on that titty juice. No wonder he's acts like it's such a child that can't have an adult discussion without like laughing and throwing insults. He's drinking breast milk. This is my vegetable plot down here, you can see it. This is my vegetable plop down here. You can see it. Little Joey wouldn't be able to get his little twingily little city arms into this vegetable plot as I drink my milk. And I've got like the murdered skin of a cow's bottom on my head. He's wearing a dead cow's ass on his head as a hat, right? This is like, imagine if that was human skin on his head, right? Uh, and he was wearing it as a hat. This is, this guy's wearing the skin of a murder victim on his head as a fashion item. Well, then, there I've got potatoes in since January. I grow the majority of the veg to feed my family. Well, you know, Gareth, you're, you're a soldier. You're an absolute icon, an English hero. How many animals do you reckon you kill in your vet little potato plot there, mate? I can see them all, actually. Imagine harvesting that. How many animals would die? Like heaps, man. God, you probably killed a worm.
You probably killed one worm for all those potatoes. How many potatoes, uh, how many animals do you think die harvesting potatoes? Are you serious? Are you serious? You don't think mice know to run away when they hear some adult human in the field with a big machine? It's just crazy. Like, he he expects us to believe, right, that he kills a bunch of animals just growing potatoes or lettuce. You can see. None, None of this land, land could, could grow food. food. So what? So what? Does that mean you have to put lambs on there? You, you you know, like you're making a bunch of money off the lambs on, on that land. You know, do you have to deforest and put animals on there? You can grow enough plant, but you, you need magnitudes less land to to get more calories, right? You can get more calories from magnitudes less land when you um, grow plant foods. And uh, in the Joseph Poor study, they found that you could reduce the Earth's farmland by 75% and still um, feed the population the same amount of calories if we all just went plant-based. How crazy is that? Like in the Joseph Paul study, they found that 83% of farmland is used for um, animal agriculture, meat and dairy, and uh, it only provides 18% of calories. You know what I mean? Like 18% of calories for 83% of farmland. None of this land could grow food for Joey and his gang because it's intermediate land. It's uh, poorer land that we get on than the lowlands. And what it's ideal for is to grow grass and for grazing them animals and for us to produce top quality protein. And we're getting, you know... It's just an advocate, isn't he? Like Joey and his gang wouldn't be able to grow their food on there. You're growing potatoes up there, dude. How on earth are you growing potatoes up there, Gareth? What are you saying? Can't grow potatoes? That's hilarious. Never take what they say for face value, right? Because of course he's going to say that. You can't grow plants on this land. You know what I mean? Let me just uh, have a quick squeeze of his land. It's absolutely massive, right? Today, you're going to be helping me and Kate. This is Gareth. Gather these mountains. True, true you. hero. Are you telling me, right? That you could not put, put potatoes in those fields? Like, why not? Like, can anyone ask, answer me this? How on earth, right, is he able to grow them at his house, but he's not able to grow them here? Like, what is the matter with this land? Is it because they can't get a tractor in? He's got like a four-wheeler. Beside the point, I don't really care if you can or, or can't grow food on this land. I don't believe that's true. I think you could. Look at that. Look how flat that is. But let's just say there's a bunch of land that's not arable, right? You can't you, you can't grow crops on them. Irrelevant. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I think I don't think we should listen to farmers about what's arable and what's not because they don't actually care um, because they're not interested in changing at all. You know, I just I just find it really hard to believe someone who's got such a heavy bias into stabbing animals in the neck for his own um, financial gain. We are getting you know top dollar at the moment and people are supporting us and. We're getting top dollar at the moment. That's all he cares about. See, top dollar. You're getting top dollar. And the debate was on whether or not um, it's okay to stop promoting cheap meat to people because poor people aren't going to get enough food. And all you're worried about is top dollar, mate. You're not worried about feeding the population and helping poor people and feeding the people from the land and doing all these noble things. You're interested in top dollar. That's what you're interested in, top dollar. Um, it's really, really good that we're getting the message out there. So, yeah, he died, everyone retard everyone and he just drinks titty juice like filled with pus straight down his throat oh my god it's like i want to vomit watching that but um getting the message out there what you have to advocate that they're, they're acting like activists getting the message out there you have to advocate so hard for meat and dairy because it's on its last legs mate i'm telling you people are gonna actually realize how sickening it is to eat blood flesh and secretions from animals like that that I just think is a dying industry. I honestly think it's a dying industry, and he's trying his hardest to uh, advocate for it. So nutritious. What he is is a salesman. Just remember that he's a salesman trying to sell his product. How much more do I have to prove vested interest? So he's promoting these body parts because he sells them because they're a product to him. That's why he's just recommending it so much. It's so nutritious. Mate, it's sustainable. It's uh, really, really good for you. Like, here we are eating lamb. I'm eating my product here. It's such a great product. If he was a car salesman, right, 
He was just going to say, oh, look at this Lamborghini, mate. Best Lamborghini, most efficient Lamborghini. It could be a pile of crap, right? But, of course, he's a salesman. He's going to sell it to you. Oh, no, they they want to die. More animals die for lettuce, definitely, than, than sheep. That's all these, all these lies to get you to buy the product, right? They're not interested in what's true. They're interested in what sells their, their product and what keeps their industry afloat and what keeps the money pouring into his pocket. You know, I know because I'm a farmer, I'm in that field. You know, I see what that is for me to produce my salads, for my tomatoes. You know, everything is got a cost. <laughs> I see how many animals die for my tomatoes. It's like huge amounts, man. Maybe a few insects come and they have to put like some, some mite dust on there so they don't eat the plant. When are you killing animals to protect a plant? Uh, tomato plant wouldn't you usually have tomatoes inside like like a little greenhouse or something you can grow them inside and that like he's just tripping out he's just tripping out like oh mate like so many animals die for tomatoes like prove it show me the how many animals are dying we know about pesticides pesticides usually protect plants anyway you know they're not just there's not just like a bunch of insects on the plants and they spray them all they spray them with the pesticides it stops insects and animals from from getting to the plants but anyways like so many more animals die because of animal agriculture it's if it's insane the fish the farmed fish who eat plants they eat um all of these like canola seeds and things like that they feed put in the fish food so they're growing the and cultivating crops to feed to farmed fish right they're growing and cultivating crops to feed to chickens in the uk which is they, they they're probably generating most of the the crop usage in the UK, like I think 57% of the soy soybeans imported to the UK are imported imported from Brazil. And 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 I think the biggest consumer of soy from Brazil in the UK is chickens. Fairly sure. Can do a bit of fact checking on that. Chickens are the biggest driver of one of the biggest drivers of deforestation. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And the reason I'm saying that is because whenever I'm talking about animals eating crops, any of the crop related harm. Um, you have to add that on to the actual killing of the animal as well into the equation. Chickens eat a bunch of soy, which had to be harvested and spray pesticide, right? So when you're eating a piece of chicken, you're also eating everything that chicken ate. When you're eating a piece of steak, you're eating all the water, all the hay, all the silage that was harvested over the animal's life. When you're drinking milk, all of the, and, and, and dairy cows, they're, they're more, they demand more energy because they're producing milk. So they eat more silage and hay and, you know, water and all these things just to get your little glass of milk. It's just, it's just a stupid um, use of land and water and resources. Everything will have a death toll on it. And Joey sits there as the perfect, you know, person that thinks that he's saving, you know, in Manchester buying his local produce. I bet he's never grown anything. I bet you can't even string a sentence to sit together, Gareth, mate. Like, what are you trying to say? Like, I, I can't even follow you. You know what I mean? You think you're the perfect person? Like, did I come out to this bait and go, hey, I'm the perfect person? Um, I don't I don't think uh, one insect has died because I live. Uh, when have I ever said that? Like, I'm not stupid. Um, but, you know, he's straw manning me. Straw man, straw man. So he's building a straw man argument to, to attack because he can't attack my argument. So he's just building a nice little straw man. Hey, look, I'll, I'll create a fake argument that Joey has never said, and then I'll attack that argument because I can't attack his argument. What else did he say? Oh, there's too many things to count, actually. But he's never put his hands in the soil. <laughs> That's the one. You know what, mate? Like, hey, unless you've put your hands in the soil, you don't know how to debate factory farming in the UK. Like, are you serious? So if I go out there, right, and stick my hands in some soil, then all of a sudden I come in and I go, hey, Garth, or whatever your name is, Gareth, I've got um, dirty hands, mate. My hands have been in the soil. Can you listen to my arguments now? Can you listen to the research I've just, you know, tried to explain to you? No? Oh, so it's nothing to do with me putting my hands in my soil. What have I said to you? I've got a garden out the back, Gareth. I've got a little, you know, wait, wait, wait. what if I pulled this out and said, hey, mate, well, don't, don't, mate, do you know how many animals? died for this buddha to have hair like so many man just trust me trust me bro hilarious it's like your argument the strength or validity of your argument is contingent on whether or not you've stuck your hands in the soil 
it wouldn't matter if I'd never seen soil. I would still know more about farming than you. Like, obviously, I've been in a bunch of factory farms. You know what I mean? A bunch of them. I don't even know if Gareth's ever stepped foot in a in a in a broiler shed. You know what I mean? If he has, he's keeping that quiet. Then he's a liar. Um, he's he's hiding the truth from people. Because if you walk through these broiler farms, you're going to see dead, dying chickens everywhere. Just common, so common. Their their bodies are too big for them to sustain their weight. You'll just see dead, dying birds breathing on their last breath on their faces in uh, factory farms all over the UK. Just go into a random one, and and you tell me what you see. Absolute nonsense, this guy. You can't, you know, do you grow carrots? If you don't grow carrots, you don't know what you're talking about. He has got no understanding of agriculture, farming, and how important livestock is in that death too. So basically, I had my mic rolling. So if you go to my channel, you can hear what I said. And what I said to him is that that the plants that the animals eat have a death toll to them as well. You know what I mean? Because he was just... You know, he wasn't going to let me talk anyway, so he had to talk over this guy. Had a high yeah. artificial fertilizer, which has doubled, okay? So we've gone from 240 pounds. And you see Darren Grimes just nodding like, yeah, yeah, thanks, Gareth. You're our, you're our golden boy, Gareth. You know, chugging milk like Gatorade with your bloody potato field where apparently you can't grow crops. You know, so you, you can't grow crops. He's got a potato field. Apparently he grows a bunch of crops like lettuce. Because he knows how many animals die for lettuce and tomatoes. But at the same time, you can't grow crops on his land. You can only grow lambs and stab them to death. And, you know, actually, when he grows tomatoes, he's killing way more animals than when he when he actually just kills a bunch of lambs every year. And uh, he, he doesn't equate how many crops actually are fed to animals in animal agriculture, which actually bump up the death toll by a whole bunch. But, yeah, keep going, mate. Um, per ton to over a thousand pound a ton. Yeah. Half the food in the world is produced from artificial fertilizer. Why is that a bad thing? Like, why is it a bad thing to have synthetic fertilizer? Like, uh, that's what, what I'm wondering about. Is it really bad to to synthetically um, introduce nitrogen and stuff into the soil? Like, I don't know. And there are veganic farmers and that that do their thing, but like I just don't know if it's such a bad thing to synthetically introduce nutrients into the soil. Like maybe there are negative ways to do it, and maybe there is ways that are just like pretty neutral, like not much different. I don't know why you need animal manure to do all this. And anyway, we would need far less crops and far less manure if we all went plant based anyway, because. Most of the, the cropland and farmland is being used for animal agriculture. So you'd need less manure <laughs> and less synthetic fertilizer. Does he think that all this synthetic fertilizer has been used for vegans who make up who he thinks are the minor minority? We're three to five percent, right? But we're using all of this animal manure for all of our crops. No, all of the animal manure is being put onto most of the animal manure has been put onto crops that are then being fed back to the animals. <laughs> you know, seeing as the vast majority of farmland is used for animals. Do you know what I'm saying? So we would any problem he's talking about when it comes to plant farming would be greatly minimized if we all ate plants anyway, because you'd need less resources to produce those plants and less land and everything. So, anyways, but you try to explain this to to Gareth, like he just sees it any any argument with facts and logic as a Rubik's cube that he just can't solve. We need our livestock, we need our manure more than ever to go forward, to grow our vegetables, to grow our salads, to grow our crops. He needs to he doesn't understand this. He has to start to listen to the people that work in the land and that are feeding him every single day. Because that's what farmers are doing. We're feeding you, Joey. Wow. Mic drop, Gareth. We're feeding you, Joey. You know, like, you're not feeding me any of your lambs, mate. You don't grow crops for people. You grow crop. You said you grow the fruits and vegetables for yourself. I don't. You're not feeding me anything, mate. I'm not eating your chopped up, murdered baby lambs. And that's what I said. Do you need slaughterhouses? Ah, forgets the slaughterhouse. Eh? They all just, just forget the slaughterhouse, don't they? They're never like advocating for slaughterhouses, are they? They're always just like advocate for our product. Gareth, uh, I don't know if Gareth does or does not, but most of the time they just put the animals on the truck, they take them to the slaughterhouse and they do the job, the dirty work, killing their his beloved animals. 
He cares not for his animals anyway. He doesn't really care. Thank you, Gareth. Joey, very briefly, please, last word to you. So he's going to give me the last word, reluctantly. Look at look his face, reluctantly giving me the last word. Well, uh, in Manchester here, there's a gas chamber that kills pigs uh, and they scream. You can hear them screaming and it's aversive to them. I don't know how you justify that by saying, oh, we need their manure. Just because you need manure for the ground doesn't mean you need to murder all those animals in slaughterhouses. I mean, you just like to avoid the slaughterhouse and a lot of people do. They're being, people like Gareth, they, they pro propagate humane lies to the public and they get sold this cheap meat Factory farming is a, is disgusting in this country, just like any other country. And I'm an investigator. I see it all the time. And I see all these, these false advertisements and people just got to wake up. And uh, now, folks, I don't know about you, but I am not living the life of a hamster. <laughs> Hilarious, Darren. You don't want to live the life of a hamster. You know what I mean? Like, that's just great. Like, you're saying like, all vegans are hamsters. Like, we eat vegan burgers, vegan pizza, vegan burritos, vegan, like, you know, whatever we want, vegan, vegan ice cream. You know what I mean? Darren, like, you, you're pretty funny, mate. Like, you're not living the life of a hamster. You know, the thing is, what Darren is doing is he's just trying to satisfy his little traditional conservative audience. He knows who his audience is, and it's those traditional farming, British nationalist, go Britain, everything Britain does is good, and everything that is traditional should always stay traditional. That's his audience. So he's not going to just throw go, oh, actually, those vegans had a point. He's never going to say that. I, I don't think he his job would depend on it, actually, uh, on him not saying it. So even if he agreed that I had good points in his own little mind, I don't think he would have uh, the backbone or courage to agree with any of those points because it, they go against the whole the whole channel's bias, maybe. Like the, his, his whole bias, it goes against... Um, you know, he thinks with this green extreme, he keeps going on about this green extreme thing. And anyways, um, yeah, doesn't know anything about animal rights or anything about um, farming in the UK. And that's very clear. And he was quite actually quite rude and dismissive towards me. But um, if they ever want round two, happy to do round two. Um, so, yeah, that's my little response to that. Uh little response to Gareth there, you know, lamb is the most nutritious food on earth, even though it's filled, laden with cholesterol, saturated fat, and uh, red meat is a uh, class 2A carcinogen, meaning it probably causes cancer. And it's also just butchered lambs. I, I mean, I could show you all what happens to lambs in a slaughterhouse in the UK. I don't want to terrify you and make you feel sick, so I'm not going to. But if you really, if you really want to see what happens to lambs in the UK, then you can just look up lamb slaughter footage. Watch how they get decapitated and skinned. Um, innocent little beings didn't ask to be born onto Gareth's farm, that's for sure. Um, coming up, I don't know how many poor little lambs are getting slaughtered for Easter, but probably a lot. And people are going to eat their little cut up little baby legs. Um, incredibly sickening and vile. And you're not going to catch me on TV. I don't care whose show it is. Just taking some middle ground, not when it comes to this. This is killing baby animals, torturing, stabbing them, putting them in factory farms, little baby chickens. Like you're not going to catch me. Um, that is not the activist I am, and don't ever expect me to be that activist. Um, if you don't like my style, that's fine. Don't watch me, whatever. I'm there to agitate and to create discussion and to talk, speak the truth, and I, and I cut through the nonsense. That's what my style of activism does. There's plenty of fantastic activism uh, from other activists who don't do that, actually. They're, they're much more mild um, and much more likable, actually. But um, I like to cut through and speak the truth for the animals because I, I don't want the movement to become too, too apologetic about this topic. I mean, there's definitely a line that you need to, you need to toe the line between being firm uh, speak the truth and becoming just so welled up with aggression and anger where you're just not being heard at all. And you just, you know, that there is a, there is a, a, a line, right. But I don't think taking that, um, especially when you're talking about something serious as the animal Holocaust, like this is a mess. It's the most violent thing. The, it's, it's the most evil, violent thing that causes the most suffering ever in existence. You know what I mean? That's how bad it is. And uh, people don't think it's that bad because of people like Gareth. You know, there's this thing, oh, yeah, it's also humane farming. And they laugh at me when I speak just simple truths because of how 
how indoctrinated people are and how conditioned they are. There we go. Brett's got something to bring to the party. Brett, wow, well, mate, meat is awesome. You should get a job at GB News. That's the most, that's the type of argument they would really like to propagate on that news channel, mate. Like you should, meat is awesome. That's the only argument you would need actually to wreck anyone. That's all I've got to say. I think I'm pretty much exhausted what I had to say on that matter. But anyways, guys, catch us later. I love you all. Thanks for your support and I'll speak to you soon.